You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Yo, what is up? There are 27,000 of you guys on the line with us this afternoon, and I thank you for that. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of people, but don't worry, because we can house all of you guys here on the show. That is the cool and awesome thing about Vigilantes Radio. Anyway, what I want to tell you guys is that it's not what you need that counts. Yeah, I need to lose weight. I need more money. I need to spend more time with my family. I need a better job. I need to win the lottery. I need to finish that project. I need this. I need that. We hear people saying these things all the time. Everyone's telling us like what they need. Guess what, dudes? No one cares what you need. It doesn't matter what you need. Your need is not sufficient reason for anyone to do anything for you or give anything to you. It's really not. Your need doesn't accomplish anything. It doesn't provide value. What do you need that doesn't matter? Some people devote a lifetime to needing something. And it gets them nowhere. We recently witnessed the failure of communism as an economic system. The principle of to each according to his need is one that is doomed. Truthfully, no society can thrive for very long on such an assumption. Not that we shouldn't be compassionate. No, I'm not saying that. But our compassion should be directed. Not at fostering and encouraging need but at encouraging challenge and effort. If you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. I know you heard that. And if you teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Which of the following statements do you find to be the most powerful? I really, really need to lose weight. Or, I'm committed to doing whatever it takes to lose 10 pounds this month. It is not what you need that counts. It is what you do about that need that counts. You won't get anything by simply needing it. Value and wealth and all the good things in life are created by effort. Yeah, say it with me. (laughs) Effort. Express your goals in terms of desire and action. I'm taking new steps every day to increase my earnings. And then take those actions. Don't dwell on what you need. Concentrate on what you can do. Get out of the dead end. I need mentality. And like Nike say, just do it. Man, take it from me, Danny Mussolini. You're live in the mix. Let's get this started. Yo, it feels so good to be back with you guys once again. So one time, one time for my people who are indigos and starseeds, and two times for my people who are vegans. We are averaging over 34,000 plus listeners, and we've been at this for three solid years. I appreciate all you guys who've been rocking with the kid on this journey, and we're still growing, baby. It is all because of you, most definitely. We are the people who have dedicated their lives to music, spirituality, business, literature, art, movies, and research in every aspect. And we want to allow you an opportunity to tell your story. 
Man, if we've had celebrities on the show from Grammy Award winning artists, nominees to actors, comedians, CEOs, technology geniuses, visual artists, from authors to professors and aliens, or people who think they're aliens, it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, come on our show and talk to me. So check it out to book an interview or just to share a real cool story. Email me at vradio at only one media group.com. I'm passionate about what I do, just as passionate about what you do, and together, yes, together, we can get your voice heard by the people who should hear it. So let's create something incredible. And with that, hello out there, and welcome to another episode of our podcast, Vigilantes of Radio. Thank you again, as always, for tuning in and being a part of our audience family. You know the number to dial. It's 701 801 Nine eight one three to connect with us or our guests, or you can hop in and mix directly from my website, which is only one media group.com. Scroll over to the Vigilantes Radio tab and slap that go live button, and you'll be right here live in the mix with all of us or in the chat room. So feel free to shoot over some questions to ask our guests while they are here. And as always, all episodes are available for free download. You can grab that from Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, iTunes, YouTube, the app called Podcast Addict, or over at our website. And that goes for every single episode that we ever aired. Well, I don't want to keep 27,000 of you guys waiting any longer so let's go ahead and dive deep into this interview shall we today's interview is the joshua mars interview and i am definitely your host dini mussolini but before we dive deep are you living with pain i was after a nasty fall i got relief with one hour pain relief i'm barry arconi president and here's lisa a marine who was injured in iraq after surviving an explosion, I was on horrible painkillers for lingering head, shoulder, back, and knee pain. But I hated the dangers and side effects. My friend told me about one-hour pain relief, and now I'm off the drugs. One-hour pain relief is the result of 15 years of research on an amazing extract from hops, the plant used to flavor beer. Whether your pain is from an injury or just aging, you get safe, all-day relief in less than one hour. We're so sure you'll love one-hour pain relief, too that we'll send you a one-week trial for just a small shipping charge. Call 800-269-9500 right now. That's 800-269-9500. There's no gimmicks, no obligation, no automatic shipments. Stop living with pain. Call 800-269-9500 for your one-week trial or visit onehourpainrelief.com. That's 800-269-9500. We are the people who have dedicated their weekdays and nights to music books movies news business ventures conspiracies yeah and just talking every aspect from our incredible writing and promotion here on our new facebook page by the way make sure you go like us there to our interviews and music shows on vigilantes radio and the all music hour or skeptics where we talk money music business relationships spirituality all that good stuff we spend each and every day giving our maximum effort to create a vibrant and exciting indie and professional community for all creative minds that coexist in this beautiful artistic world our special guest today is joshua mars so let's go ahead and bring him on hey joshua you're now live and mixed with all of us how is it going and how are you feeling I'm feeling great, Dini. How are you doing today, man? Man, I'm blessed. Can't complain. Well, actually, I can't complain, but uh, nobody wants to hear that. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> he said, right. <laughs> you don't want to hear it. <laughs> That's cool. Nah, we, all, cool. we all got something to complain about, man, but just got to push through it. Yes, sir. So how's the weather up in Delaware? It's uh, it's crazy, as usual. It, it's pretty nice out today. It's, it's nice and sunny. Uh but mm-hmm. all throughout the week, it's just random showers. Yeah, it's been the same down here in, in, in the South Mississippi. Yeah. It's you know one day rainy, this day is blazing hot. But right. <laughs> I guess, man, bipolar climate. So. Oh, no. So, man, uh, shall we dive deep into this interview? Yep. 
All right, man. So it all has to start somewhere. Um, what you started with East Legit was sure to continue on into the career that you have now, filled with music and meeting new people, meaning your fans, of course. Like any incredible artist out there, your music will change and grow and evolve over time. Um, but from where it all started, Joshua, to where we are now with Spoils of the Voyage, where might you take it next? Uh, you know, where I'm taking it next is uh, is somewhere that is kind of uncharted territory. Um, over the past two years, I've really been building my brand and, uh, you know, showing people who I am really inside. Uh, and, and I feel... You know, I'm a, I'm a pretty wavy person. Uh, I heard you say something, you know, you talk to some people who think they're aliens. I'm definitely one of those people. <laughs> um, and, and you know, I've just kind of, I've, I've built this story so far about where where this character Mars has come from and, uh, and, and you know, what's, what's to come after this tape is the album, uh, which I'm shooting for next year. Uh, and it's really just the culmination of everything I've learned musically and everything I've learned, you know, in my personal journey, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I got a lot of stuff I want to say about things that are going on uh, in society right now. And, and up until now, I felt like I, I'm not inclined to talk about that. It's been more about myself and my journey. So now I'm ready yeah. to take it to a bigger plane. Wow. That would be like a, uh, you know, complete, uh, how can I say it? I want to say 180, but like, like you said, uh, unexplored territory going from, you know, focusing on your growth and the things you go through to, you know, tackling like social issues, man, because <laughs> all you gotta do is turn on the TV and, um, it's there in our faces. So it's like, Oh yeah. You know, so what do you feel like, you know, you've come to the point where, okay, I've got my story out. Now I need to focus on like uh, world issues, maybe something like that. Uh, you know, I, I guess that's kind of the thinking, you know, my story is never going to end, you know, no one's story ever ends, but, uh, yeah. you know, throughout, throughout, you know, I've been telling, uh, stories of the past up until now and it's to the point where, all right, I got most of my, most of my good stories. This is my fifth project. So most of my good stories to now have been, you know, put out there. And if people have listened to my projects, they've, they've, you know, kind of grown with me, um, and so now I feel it's time to step out of that. And yeah, I'm still going to talk about, you know, personal things that go on with me. But I think it's time to really touch base on what's going on around us. You know, I feel like a lot of people are out of touch of, of what's going on. Uh, you know, whether that be by choice or just, you know, by by being under a rock, who knows. But uh, I feel there's issues that need to be brought to light uh, that aren't talked about maybe maybe enough or in the right manner and uh so i'm ready to just yeah. you know give my take on things i see i see so like everything that's happening is making you feel some type of way and usually when that happens it's time to address it right definitely yep yep all right man i know that uh first question should have probably been the last one but i was just curious to know from the jump man uh what in your skill set still has room to grow change and evolve or, or what would you like to learn in order to incorporate that new sound skill into your music? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I think I think the biggest thing for me that I'm still growing with is uh, is my audio engineering. Um, you know, I've been I've been rapping since I was 12. Uh, mm -hmm. That's when I really got into hip hop. I'm I'm about to be 22 in a couple months, so it's been just about 10 years now that I've really been immersed in hip hop. And uh, only about two two years ago that I start audio engineering, you know, our, my team's music, uh, and we started actually releasing music. Um, and in those two years, the growth that I've made has been exponential compared to the growth I made the eight years prior. And so yeah. for me, it's really still focusing on, you know, how do I clean up the sound? I think, you know, this record that, that I got for everyone today, uh, you know, I hope everyone enjoys it. I think we, we really did a good job with it. Uh, the the producer bk beats you know i've been linking up with some people and, and it's really just about continuing to move move forward in, in every aspect that i can yeah now and, and going back to what you just said like uh 10 years so two years has been like professional i guess you can say and the other eight were more like uh development 
Like, yeah. do you ever feel like, man, I, I believe I wasted eight years. I mean, it felt that way for me because I, I have I pretty much have the same story you did uh, a while ago. Um, 10 years at it and then like the last few years that I was active it was like everything was so you know incredible and I was like you know the past uh, 7 or 6 years I feel like I've just been chasing my tail do you ever feel like that? Uh, I definitely I definitely did you know during the journey there were times where I was just you know kind of like man what's what's not happening for me but i think the reason i didn't take it you know serious until about two years ago or or really take my music public was because you know that growth inside me wasn't finished you know and Mm. i felt any anything i would have released at that point wouldn't have been wouldn't have been you know adequate i feel like if i had someone who you know if i had a mentor when i was younger who kind of showed me the ropes then maybe maybe those earlier years would have been spent a little differently, but you know, I really had to learn everything on my own. So so really that that eight years for me was really just about building up my self confidence and making sure I was sure that you know this is this is the sound I wanted to go for. And as soon as I knew, you know, that this is what I wanted to do, I mean there was just no no stopping me. And, and like I said, this is about my fifth project in two years. Uh, along with my partner, who's also dropped uh, five projects in the past two years, so and I've I've engineered all of them, so it's been so, just constant practice, you know. Yeah. And let's talk about those eight years, man. Um, like you started at age twelve, that's where it all started for you. But when was yeah. that exact moment that you knew that rapping, uh, doing music, was something that you had to do? I think uh, I think when that decision, you know, became apparent to me, um, was uh, about about two years ago. Just at the end of 2014, I had um, I had just started my freshman year of college. Uh, mm-hmm. Me and my roommate got into some issues. I ended up, you know, leaving the school and uh, going back home with my parents. And um, you know, I really didn't have anything to to go on, and I had no money. You know, I, I had just like got kicked out of school, so I didn't have anywhere to go. I got, um, you know, I went and just like found myself a job, and and you know, um, everyone around me was telling me, you know, go back to school. I was young, I was like 19, and so you know, mm-hmm. school, school. That's that's what, that's one of the big the big issues I have with with things, you know, now is school. But uh, that's for yeah. a different day. <laughs> yeah, school, yeah, uh, uh, I get tested in that. Yeah. So then, then I kind of realized, hey, music is what I got. You know, I said that's the one thing that I've loved doing my entire life. And you know, there were things that I tried to pick up during high school. You know, different hobbies that that I just kind of fell off from. A lot of different things I tried and didn't follow through with. And then I realized, hey, throughout all this, I've been making music. So why not do that? And that's when I really buckled down. And and you know dropped that first project a few months later and just went from there with it dope dope so where did a title like spoils of the voyage come from we know you're alien so we we probably know you visit so many planes and and uh planets in between times you know time portals and actually that line in in the open is just a call into all the other aliens because i think i'm one as well but that's for another show awesome (laughs) yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Spoils of the Voyage, you know, uh, last year, um, it was actually June of last year, I dropped a, a mixtape um, that's on SoundCloud and Datpiff. It's called Intergalactic Voyages. Um, and I'd say up until now, that was really the, the main project, you know, that I've been working towards. Um, when I dropped that, mm-hmm. that was really like, that was my big story. That was like from, from front to back just you know everything that happened to me uh from the time that i like you know when i was a kid to falling in love with hip-hop to all the way through college and and all the ordeals i faced there and you know how i how i how i picked myself up after that and 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 it was a 23 song like an hour and a half tape it was it was real long it was just a big it was like my my memoir and uh and so this is like this is the follow-up to that this is you know, after the intergalactic voyages, you know, what have, what did I take from all my travels 
and and what have I seen what have I seen about like I said I talk a lot about myself uh, I do address like I- issues with other people you know in, in kind of a third person sense um, but it's really just you know my observations uh, you know like I said I feel like I'm I feel like I am an alien like I'm a, I'm a visitor to this planet so like yeah. what have I seen and, and what's really going on from my eyes mm-hmm cool man and, and as far as the singles go from your latest project like um slipping which is produced by violin and in the night produced by bk beats who else produced records for this project um so actually uh yeah the, the producer villain he he produced about villain cool yeah 10 yeah his, his name is dylan he just made that john a v it's pretty mm-hmm. tough um but uh he, he produced a, a good amount. BK Beats produced two for me. Um, I produced two of the tracks, and, uh, and and that's and that's it. Dylan produced ten of them. So um, you know it's fourteen tracks in total. Uh, oh oh, and my uh, my homie Badlands also produced one of the tracks. Gray. Uh, it originally wasn't going to be on the tape, and then you know I switched it in uh, a couple months back. I'm pretty glad I did. That's a it's a pretty wavy record. Cool man. Were they tailored, or did you just have a whole gang of tracks to choose from? Um, so a, a lot of them are tailored uh, for me. Um, me and me and Villain. Um, he's one of my you know uh, producers that I have signed to my label, and uh, me and him really just go in on a lot of beats. Um, you know, he'll bring something to me, and we'll you know touch it up and mess around with it a little bit, just so you know I got it exactly where I want it. Um, as far as the few other beats go that were made by BK and Badlands. Uh, those were just, you know, instrumentals I'd come across uh, in mm-hmm. in their in their repertoire, and I was like, man, I gotta have this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, we struck up a deal, and uh, I got the exclusives for those, and and then I have you know my two beats and the rest from from Villain. So you know, most of it is tailored, and that's how I want to go moving forward. Is really, you know, not only making beats for myself. Uh, you know, I'm a producer for other people as well as, you know, my own artist and you know, I do a lot of different things. Right. Did you help on, uh, did you help Dylan on the, uh, single? Uh, on the single Slippin', he actually, uh, produced that one himself. Cool. All right, man. We, we know right now with all new releases, the artists are typically out and about having all the fun, performing, talking about the record as much as possible. But let's hear from you. Tell us about the short-term and long-term goals for Joshua Mars and, and, and your label, New Wave Music, and, and as well as your catalog. What's on the horizon to come? Yeah, so I think, you know, with the rest of 2017, it's really just about, um, you know, this tape that I'm dropping uh, and two of my artists, Genesis and Neb, they're... Um, they're combining to, to drop a uh, collaborative project later this year. Uh, we're shooting for October. Um, and, and, you know, we're going to be trying to do some shows up and down the East Coast, uh, you know, just to really get the word out about those. Um, mm-hmm. So so I definitely am going to keep all my followers posted on that. Uh, you know, we're building the brand. Um, we're, you know, we just started a line, a, a clothing line, um, you know, that we're, we're going to have up on our website soon. So it's really just, you know, every every facet that we can push to the limits you know we're gonna we're gonna go for it we're gonna continue making music every day and and really just you know trying to make our mark on the industry Uh, you know so over the next year or two i want people to really get to know us you know get to know me get to know my label my artists um and and you know long term i mean we're here to stay you know i don't plan on ever leaving you know I, i'm here to give back to the hip-hop community what what it's given to me for the past 10 years you know i've just taken 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 from it all this knowledge and all this you know when i listen to music I, i'm i'm at peace so yeah. now it's my turn to give back to to that community so yeah i, I plan to be a, a pillar that's dope that's dope 
So it, it seems like no matter like which band or artist is that we choose to have on the show, um, sometimes we both see short songs and short albums at time. And uh, uh, Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day was once quoted to say that anything that can't be said in under three minutes isn't worth saying. So I was watching your video to slip in. The song itself falls right at uh, three minutes and four seconds. Do you apply this theory as well? And is there some sort of truth in that for you? Um, you know, I, I've never really thought on, you know, the length of, of songs uh, too much. You know, sometimes I feel like I have a lot to say. Uh, so I, I do have some songs that are, you know, six, seven minutes long uh, on other on other projects that really I just, you know, whatever topic I'm talking about, I feel like there's there's so much I just have to let out about it. Uh, and yeah. sometimes, you know, it's really, you know, less is more. Uh, definitely sometimes if you can get to the point of what you're trying to say uh, and, and, you know, keep it short, but, but still keep it groovy. You know, some people can just bob to and. You know, they don't have to sit there and listen through a whole 10 minute symphony. You can put, you know, you can put your, your mind uh, into, you know, a three minute song. And some of my, definitely some of my favorite songs that I've made are under three minutes. Because um, it's really just, most of the time you're just bringing some bars, you might 16 or 32 and it's just something hot and then you get out before you do any damage, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually don't agree with uh, Billy Joe Armstrong, but, you know, to each his own. Um, what, in your opinion, makes for a perfect cover song? Um, my bandmate tells me there's no, sh no such thing as a perfect cover. Do you agree, or and do you perform, like, covers at live shows or even for YouTube? And you know that rap songs can be done as covers. And I, I wouldn't say like, you know, rapping the same lyrics as, as Dr. Dre or Snoop, but using just the beat is some form of cover song, you know? Right. Uh, do you yeah. do any? Um, so I have. I have in the past. Um, and, you know, I haven't made it uh, a huge, you know, a hugely public thing. It's really, you know... To me, remixing and covering, like remixing, is a thing in its own. When you when you grab a beat and you you do something different to it, um, and that's you know you have to go through the proper channels, making sure you get you know the beat cleared and everything. Doing a cover, uh, you know, I've never thought about it rapping wise, because covering a song to me is really just uh, it's more about showing you know showing the people, hey, you know this song. And you know you like this artist, so let me show you that I'm just as good as this artist you like. You know, trying to trying to draw a comparison between you know you and an existing musician. Uh, that's kind of like what what uh, X did with Drake. You know, just calling him out from the beginning. And mm -hmm. you know, so it's definitely a a very you know useful strategy to use. You know, utilizing other musicians music and I think you know sharing music you know I believe that all of us as creators really should be able to to do as we please um, and especially for nonprofit you know a lot of this a lot yeah. of the remixes and stuff I've tried to do I don't try to sell them or anything you know most of the time it's just hey I like I really like this beat I think I can do it better than the original artist let me try it out so you know I think it's cool to test yourself like that and I, I definitely think it's you know, some people like, man, way back when Drake was doing comeback season, I mean, he, he had remixes on, like, his mixtapes, you know, remixes on his, his like, whole tapes that, like, was, you know, he did the, the Barry Bonds remix. Like, mm -hmm. I would love to get a Kanye beat cleared to go, to go rap on it. So I definitely think it's a cool thing, but uh, it comes, you know, comes with, you know, time. Yeah, and what I don't understand is that Drake, man, he got he got mad at other artists who like redid his songs. How would you feel if somebody covered your song and actually did it better than you? Yeah, see, I I really don't know how I would feel if if someone like outdid me on my own song, but uh, you know, more power to him. <laughs> um, like, you know, I think uh, I don't really see a lot of a lot of competition, and that's not. You know, that's not just from a, a confidence standpoint. Of course, I'm confident about myself, but I don't really see the rest of these artists as, as competition. I see them as, 
you know, an opportunity to to create something new. So, mm-hmm. you know, trying to compare myself to other artists, I've never, you know, I, I've never been that kind of that kind of person to, you know, be be beefing with another artist or something. If you know, if they want to use my stuff then cool like let's see him do it if it's something that i you know i have copyrights on and they're trying to make money i mean then it's a business issue but Mm -hmm. you know for me i I definitely believe you want to grab a beat and remix it and put it on your soundcloud for your you know all your friends to see go for it like i I love to see you know the creativity that i could spark in people right you know that's part of the reason why i do this okay um who do you look up to in life and and why are these people as important you know to you um you know if if we're talking musically uh some of my some of my bigger inspirations uh childish gambino is you know Mm -hmm. a huge has been a huge pillar in in me building my career um because i mean that man donald glover does everything he he yeah. really just is a a mogul, you know, and uh, so that's really like I've I've just watched what he's done since you know from his stand up to to writing Thirty Rock to all, you know all of his music and and everything that he's done you know he makes his own beats and and he's his own engineer and that's really what made me want to be you know uh a, you know a multi tool of music, um, mm-hmm. you know. And, and other artists like Kanye was a huge inspiration for me when I was when I was growing up. Uh, Eminem with Khalifa, it really just like that's what kept me going when I was young. Listening to music, I, I really didn't have a lot of you know physical role models. I kept to myself a lot as a kid, and really so music is what you know picked me up through through my younger years. Yeah. Have any of their styles or ideas found their way in your approach in music in both writing and producing? Uh, definitely. And I mean, I could I could run off you know a whole list of like 50, 50 different artists that I really have studied. Um, but yeah. you know, just just my my main like the main artists that I would just listen to you know over and over and over again, their their flows and and you know their word choice and you know their energy it all was ingrained into my brain and I really just I think that that hodgepodge of just randomness you know really kind of crafted its own sound so there were you know points in my you know younger years when I was writing and you could really tell like all right this kid just listened to Chris Webby for six months straight he sounds just like him and and, all right like you know I had a lot of Mac Miller in my in my voice at one time and you know so I did jump from artist to artist and that's a a big reason why I didn't go public sooner. You know, I didn't want to come out and feel like I was biting a flow. Um, yeah. I really took the time to craft my own. So I, I just kind of, every artist that I, like, enjoyed listening to their music, I would just, you know, dive into their catalog and just go through it and really see, you know, how they built themselves in, as an artist. And I would just, you know, that's another, another idea for The Vault. And uh, I just kept, yeah. you know, kept building it up. Yeah, I, I know some artists, is, and, and when they're they're about to re- release a project, a lot of times they're um, either they shut them off from listening to the radio or other artists, or the actual project is inspired by an artist. Um, would you say that spoils of a voyage of the voyage was inspired by an artist? Um, not really. I mean, unless that artist is me, uh, I <laughs> I really think it was I think it was self inspired for sure. Um, Dope. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not huge on this this new wave of of music that's come out recently. It's it's really not, you know, I haven't gotten into a lot of these these new artists. So you know, I'm just kind of sticking to my roots. And and really, since I started making music, I've been more focused on on my music than you know any other music that comes out. I might not listen to a new project for two or three months because I'm just I'm working on mine or I'm working on a tape for one of my one of my you know other artists and it's right yeah, it's all about the grind now mm-hmm. is there anything that can stop you now that you're ready to launch this project 
Uh, definitely not. I mean, maybe like North Korea dropping a bomb, but besides that, I think you know I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to go. This thing is set for about a week and a half away. It's uh, yeah. not this upcoming Saturday, but the, the 26th it'll be out uh, all over the place, and I really think you know it's just time. It, 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 we're going up from here. You know, I'm gonna take this as far as I can, and uh, I really hope that I can get a lot of new fans through this tape. I really hope people enjoy this. I put a lot of work into it, and you know, I uh, I just want to build up that following so that when I'm ready to drop this album next year, like I want to be able to just self-fund a tour, you know, mm-hmm. and put something together for all my fans. All right, guys, you heard them. 26 this this is happening there's no ifs and a but it is happening all right man in your opinion what's the best move that you think you can make as an independent artist looking to get their name out there um you know i think a, a lot of people believe like a cosign is what you need or you need something from a big artist or you need that that one viral song i really i truly believe that you know the best way to progress as an artist is just consistent work every day like you got to be doing something and that's why you know writing music wasn't just enough for me like yeah i write every day but you know i i have enough time in the day to to write and like make some beats and, and you know maybe like mix some songs so i'm really always doing something and just trying to take another step forward i think you know putting putting everything else on, on the back burner and focusing on yourself is is really the way to go you know people be too caught up in in everything else going on and, and regular life to you know focus on you know their passion they want to put it to the side and maybe their passion is like their hobby you know mm-hmm. me nah i want to make my passion my career my passion is music and anyone who you know anyone who makes music who doesn't have a passion for it i, I don't understand why so yeah. if you have a if you have a passion for it man every day you get up in the morning and you just you make music what can you do to make yourself better and and it's really also about you know people people hearing your name getting yourself mm-hmm. in front of people so if you can't do it yourself you need you need a nice pr team behind you and you know that's what a lot of people a lot of people make music a lot of people around around me make music and uh, don't really do anything with it. They just kind of let it sit. You don't want to let your music sit. I mean, yeah, you can make a hit and drop it three years later, and it might be like the craziest song three years later, but it might not have did numbers if you had dropped it originally. But, you know, definitely right. don't like make a whole... I've seen people sit on a whole project for, for years and then just yeah. scrap it. Mm-hmm. Put it out there and keep on going. Uh, What's the best tool that you use and why has it proven to be successful for you? Um, The the best tool in in, in what regard, I guess? For your music. Uh, For getting my music out there? Oh, uh, social media is definitely like the way to go you know uh even a couple years ago it was really like everything was hand to hand walking around with uh you know mixtapes or or stickers or business cards or whatever you'd be giving out um Mm -hmm. i think i think now it's really can you can you hone in on this this virtual world you know that's been set up for us and anyone anywhere can see what you're doing um so you know if you have the the product you know and it's and it's good and you put it out there you you give it some nice visuals or something and you just you know you get your friends to retweet it you get you know you know if you're in a deck or whatever like however you get it out there the more people that see it like and and you know more people are going to see it in this virtual world than than anywhere else unless you like get a blimp and fly around the world but like Mm. you know this connects us instantly and i can tell anyone what's you know what's going on with my music at any time definitely um is music going to be the rest of your life from this point 
And uh, how do you think that you'll be able to keep your business soaring with fresh products over the years and not just repeating yourself on the same platform? Um, yeah, I, I definitely plan to, to do music for the rest of my life. And uh, I think it'll I think it'll come in stages, you know. Uh, I definitely don't plan to be like 70 years old still, you know, performing at, you know, Coachella and all that. But, you know, through through the years, I think, uh, you know, it's about while I'm young, just having fun, building this thing with, you know, with the people that I've surrounded myself with. I'm very close knit with everyone on my team. So, you know, we're like a family. We just want to, you know, get through this together and really, you know, we want to help each other out. Uh, we want to help all of our families out. And we really just want to get everyone around us set. We want to put our city on. And, uh, and, you know, I think keeping it fresh, you know, there's always going to be new developments in, in, you know, your life you could talk about. There's always going to be n- new craziness happening every, I mean, every day. Like you say, you turn on the news and it's just something wild going on. Um, mm-hmm. So there's always going to be something to talk about. And I think as long as, I think as long as our, our goal stays the same and and our goal really is to, to reach out to the people and to just, you know, spread love, enlighten people, you know, the best we can. And if that if that stays the same, then you know we're gonna find the best way to do that, however we can. If if we gotta switch styles of music, like let's go for it. You know, if we gotta start making reggae, like we might try it. We might make a reggae album. You know, I'm always just looking to do something new because I just I'm in love with music. I'm in love with sounds. Um, so you know, I don't think for me it's ever gonna get boring. Uh, I think, you know, I just, like I said, I just started making clothes and that's a whole new thing to me. I don't think I'm any kind of fashion designer, but I got a few, I got a few designers that I know. So they, you know, they help me out with what I'm doing. And, you know, that's a whole nother thing in its own. Like there's so many different doors that I believe are going to open as I progress Mm -hmm. with this, that I, I don't see myself getting tired of this ever, you know? Right. All right, man. Tell us a story, man. We love stories over here at Vigilantes Radio. Tell us about, like, your first musical venture. I mean, that very first mixtape, how it all played out, you know, the good, the bad, and the, uh, the ugly. Definitely. Um, so so I mentioned earlier about how, you know, my first uh, my first EP and, and my partner's first EP, they actually both dropped, like, uh, we dropped them in June of 2015. And... Um, so that's when it really got all started, and and neither of them were that were that great. We were actually listening to them the other day, and we were like, man, these are some some hot bars. Like we were we were spitting back then, so we that's why we decided to take it public. But you know, through the process, at that point, I was uh, I was in my parents' basement, right? We were set up, we had just the mic out in the middle of the room. I had a laptop, and. And, and that's you know and one pair of headphones and that's pretty much it and we just uh you know we recorded it on, on garage band on my mac and just uh you know that's back when we were using garage band i've definitely upgraded since then <laughs> but we uh you know we were just really messing around with sound that was our first time mixing music so we had been rapping for eight years and now we were like wow how do we you know we can't just lay down music and it just sounds good. How do we make it sound good? So right. it, it was definitely a lot of ugly. Um, we uh, we just kind of sat in my basement, you know, if we weren't working, like anytime we weren't working, we were just there on my laptop. And it was like, you know, we had to set up with the, with the Xboxes and stuff. So we were like playing video games, mixing music. And it was just like a, for a whole summer, we just worked on these, these EPs. Um, you know, we let them go. We felt pretty good about them. And immediately after that, we started working on the next project. So, you know, I think at that point that the hunger was like, the hunger was there. We were, you know, there was no end in sight for us already. Like we were already just off from the races and going. And I think it was a really good, uh, a really good experience. Um, you know, we didn't do, it didn't really do any numbers. We just put it on SoundCloud and like, and let it out there. And, you know, it got a, 
a decent response from our friends and whatnot and that's when we decided okay like let's really start going for it and that's when every day i just started mixing more and more and uh you know so i could build up that that sound that i was looking for right okay dope all right guys after the music break it'll be time for our usual tradition it is called the hot seat and our fans love this part of the segment and of course along with the actual interview but the audience will get to hear from joshua mars either some vocals maybe he can sing who knows or a poem inspirational speech maybe he'll freestyle rap for us or maybe he can tell us some jokes give us another story or maybe even pull out a live instrument and play something for us well you never know what these creative minds and vessels were produced in the spotlight and this afternoon we'll find out if joshua mars have what it takes to be put on the spot a test of his true artistry and maybe even some hidden talents but for right now we have joshua mars with this song in the night and we'll be right back check it out After a nasty fall, I got relief with one-hour pain relief. 
I'm Barry Yarconi, president, and here's Lisa, a Marine who was injured in Iraq. After surviving an explosion, I was on horrible painkillers for lingering head, shoulder, back, and knee pain. But I hated the dangers and side effects. My friend told me about one-hour pain relief, and now I'm off the drugs. One-hour pain relief is the result of 15 years of research on an amazing extract from hops, the plant used to flavor beer. Whether your pain is from an injury or just aging, you get safe all-day relief in less than one hour. We're so sure you'll love one-hour pain relief, too, that we'll send you a one-week trial for just a small shipping charge. Call 800-269-9500 right now. That's 800-269-9500. There's no gimmicks, no obligation, no automatic shipments. Stop living with pain. Call 800-269-9500 for your one-week trial or visit onehourpainrelief.com. That's 800-269-9500. All right, and we are back again. That was Joshua Morris with a dope track in the night. Oh, man. Look, I had to go to the bathroom, but as soon as that record came on, that changed my mind, and I just sat here, and I was like, oh, man, I got to bounce out to this beat here we can use the bathroom later right yes couldn't miss this incredible song that was playing man that that was jamming for real so i just want to tell you guys to or i just want to ask you are you a slave to the clock oh yeah do you get paid for your time most people do either by hour the day or the month most people are paid for their services and that pay is generally based on time um, I open debate with podcasting and, and interviewing a lot of people and, and you'd be surprised a lot of professionals don't believe that they should pay for an interview now I don't believe that either I don't I don't believe you should pay for interviews but what I do believe though is that you should compensate people for their time and energy spent into you know writing material putting the show together there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes a lot of research a lot of watching reading and uh that sort of thing and listening yeah so that's my belief um and and most people are paid for their services you know based on time the the plumber gets 50 bucks an hour the convenience clerk um gets like eight bucks an hour the corporate ceo gets ten thousand a month the consultant gets five thousand for a two-week project uh the lawyer gets 200 per billable hour the pediatrician gets 45 for a five-minute examination crazy i'm in the wrong field <laughs> but can you ever get paid enough for your time would you rather have more time or more money yeah think about it what is your time worth to you Mm-hmm. it is the one thing that you can never get more of it's the one thing that everyone has the same amount of you can't buy time unlike that movie uh, with Justin Timberlake um, you can buy the services of others for a certain period of time but you cannot buy time itself you cannot buy time then why are you selling it trading your time for money is a trap that's hard to get out of take school for instance and that is a big issue we talk about it all the time on the show uh four years in college that's a lot of time to be sitting in a classroom to get out and then you can't find a job with your degree then what Mm Mhm. you can't get those four years back can you nope and then it takes a little more time to find a job in your field but we'll say that for another show right Again, I would say trading your time for money is a trap that's hard to get out of because no matter how much money you're making, you'll never be able to buy that time back. Don't sell your time. Instead, sell your creativity, your ability to solve problems, your innovation, your insight, your ability to create value and enrich the lives of others. You only have so much time available but there are no such limits on your creativity or your innovation. When you begin to offer your talents and abilities instead of your time, then you break free of limitations. That may sound all well and good, Deany, as you may say, but I have to show up for work every day and put in nine hours so I can make the house payment and feed my family. I will not argue with you there. You have a valid point, my friend. 
But the good news is that you can break free of the time trap no matter what your employment or financial situation is. You don't have to be independently wealthy to do this. In fact, most people who are wealthy by their own hand got that way by doing exactly what I'm saying, breaking free of the time trap. How do you do it if you work for someone else? It's easy. You just do it. You adapt the attitude that you're no longer trading your time for money, that instead you're offering your skills and abilities and creativity and innovation and in return you're being rewarded for it. It could change your attitude or it couldn't. Now your employer may see you in terms of an hourly or monthly worker, but that doesn't mean that you have to see yourself that way. Yes, you'll still need to show up for work on a daily basis, but when you're there, you can begin to offer more than your time. You make the decision that you're no longer getting paid by the hour or by the month and start acting like you're getting paid for the value you produce. And then time will soon cease to be an issue. Are you currently being paid for your value? Oh, what, Dini? Yeah, think about it. Are you busting your tail at work but not being compensated for that? Instead, you're being compensated for the hour mark that they set you at. But we'll say that for another show. That's about how to get a raise, right? Oh, yeah. Value. So if you're getting paid by the hour, then you generally work like you're getting paid by the hour and you limit yourself accordingly. Your focus is on the short term and you accomplish more than trading your time for a little bit of money. If you think of yourself as a salary, a salary employee, then you'll work like a salary employee. If you think of yourself as an owner of the business, then you'll produce so much value that you may soon be the owner of your own business. Time is, is too much too much convenient way to measure work, and it, it it's like has no little or no relationship to the work being done. Does it really make any sense to pay anyone by the hour? Don't think of yourself as a salary employee earning X amount per month. Think of yourself as a value creator and a value producer. Look for ways to solve problems and to enrich the lives of others. Don't expect to get paid just because the clock is running. Go beyond the time trap and learn to create true wealth for yourself and for others. Take it from me, Denny Mussolini. But for right now, let's bring the man of the hour back on, Joshua Mars. You are now in our, in our hot seat. What do you have for us? Well, Dini, I, I figure I'll uh, spit a freestyle for you real quick, see what I come up with. All right. All right. Sounds good. <clears throat> um, all right. The way we kick it, we've been labeled as mystery and say nobody is sick as this. Got sniffles almost infinite. I'm simply the wickedest wizard. I got these witches with it. Scribble down and written and roll it up super lifted. I'm getting hella love from the man up above. But the man with the plan got his hand on my tongue. Let me speak. Can't nobody see me as being weak. I'm a beast to make a beat and I go retard in the streets. Let me see. Be all right and we can make it all right. You hate these flag burners, don't matter if it's the cross right. Killing clan clowns and Donald Trump is the boss fight. Step into the oval, you're fired, and then it's night night. Lights out, pipe down, nobody need to fight now. We might just find the right sound. We just need the hype now. Wanna see my name in lights taking flight like a kite now? Got a little spark and then I'm off into the night now. <laughs> wow. Man, that was fire, bro. That was fire. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Going to have to tag Trump in this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, man. Here's a... Oh, man. No doubt, bro. No doubt. So here's a random one for you, man. As wide open as it gets, what keeps you awake at night, man? Uh, myself. <laughs> my, my thoughts. Like, um... You know that that's it's pretty crazy because that's you know that's what in the night is really about is me just being you know up uh, off in the night and, and just doing my thing and i've always kind of been a night owl you know when i was a little kid i used to just like play video games all night uh and, and now you know i remember like playing my game boy with the little the little light attachment on it like <laughs> that was that was the days but uh now it's really you know i'll be making music till three in the morning because it's just you know nothing else i want to do i gotta get up for work at seven but uh but you know i still be in the studio because that's just you know that drive just just keeps me going yes sir 
websites brother where do you want to, to send people to come and find you and if they go to these places or send you a message will you respond directly oh definitely definitely um you know you can reach me at uh you know on twitter um or on instagram at joshua mars it's j-o-s-h-u-a-m-a-r-z-z um you know so you can find me there on twitter and instagram uh, you can find me on soundcloud um also joshua mars you can find me uh on apple music and anything if you want to go to my website um it's newwavemusic.net okay and it's uh there's a there's a section in there where you can send me messages and i, I am currently the one who you know responds to all of those um so so yeah you can get at me on any of my social media like i said you can get at me through the website you can check out my stuff on soundcloud and you know comment show love on there you know send me a message your favorite song and, and definitely i'm always down to talk to my fans talk talk to just i just like talking to people you know sharing stories hearing stories definitely 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 and just in case you guys you didn't catch those links I have them in the description of the show, so all you have to do is click it. I did all the hard work for you. Thank me later. You're welcome. All right. Uh, any funny, any, any any final thoughts, my brother? Man, I, I just, uh, I really hope, you know, people enjoy this tape. You know, uh, I appreciate you letting me come on here and, you know, and spreading the word to all the people. And, uh, you know, I just want, want to let everyone know you should have a blessed day. You know, let's get out here and get it definitely 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 so we reached our hour mark thank you my vigilantes family as always for checking out my podcast over here at vigilantes radio all episodes are available for free download and you can grab it from either spricker.com forward slash only one media group itunes youtube the app called podcast addict or our website which is only one media group.com and that goes for every single show that we've ever aired if you'd like to request music or send something for us to play email it to the radio at only one media group.com here my disclaimer we are drummer free we do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay but facts alone and actually you can scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right that's the bottom line this is my show something you got to deal with nah just kidding on behalf of myself danny mussolini i appreciate you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us spread the word because sharing is caring and also special thanks to our guests for joining us we stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure you have the best experience here on our show be sure to connect with us on facebook twitter instagram uh youtube tumblr we are all over just connect with us and we do follow back okay well just remember to be yourself and be absolutely freaking great at just doing that peace And now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a 7th Sign Regime Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate Exclusive.